Today we're going to take a look at Ryback and the Intercontinental title and how the WWE uses it as a leverage tool with contract negotiations. First, let's hear from the big guy himself, Ryback. Uh, winning the WWE Intercontinental Championship. You know, that was something, I remember when Vince came to me uh, and told me that, and in my mind from things, and we'll talk about it on future episodes and things of what's happened with me, uh, I feel like I've never been their guy or I was never chosen to be their guy. And I kind of was caught off guard with that. Why are they putting the Intercontinental Championship title on me here? It just seemed very random. Uh, I thought they had not committed to me on numerous occasions. Um, and that was something that always really bothered me. But, uh, you know, they put the IC title on me. And then that's kind of when things uh, took a turn for the worse when they came to me with a new contract offer, which I go, ah, okay, this makes sense now. Uh, and it was an offer that I wasn't happy with, quite frankly, for for where I've been in the company and what I've done. Now, and, and people are going to think that's mon is that monetarily wise, or is that what what about the contract? Because a lot of people think that it was about a money issue. Yeah, absolutely. not about a money issue. <laughs> so just so everybody knows, I walked away from the WWE. The contract offer that I walked away from was a three year, one point five million dollar contract. Con, I, and I told Hunter that me and Hunter had many conversations that last year, and and, and they were quite heated at times. And and I would tell him it's not about the money, and he goes, "What? Well, it sounds like it's completely about the money." No, it, it's. And he finally understood when we were finally done our last talk. It, it was it was about creative, and it was about limiting me as a brand because I am responsible for my brand, you know, the Ryback brand, the Feed Me More brand that I believe so strongly in. And when I am told I have to go out there and, and lose in two minutes or not have any build-up for a pay-per-view match, which happened time and time again when I'm not given opportunities to do promos and to be myself. That's what truly bothers me when I'm not allowed to sell merchandise or when they tell me that your merchandise is over on a ship for three years waiting to come <laughs> over when I can get it done you know, in two weeks on my own. It's little things like that that I wanted a commitment from on a much deeper end uh, and and the money was just is just one part of it what i find interesting about ryback's comments is that the wwe surprisingly put the intercontinental championship on him while they were negotiating his contract which seems to be commonplace within the organization What's interesting here is I can name over a dozen times that the WWE has given a wrestler the Intercontinental Championship as a sign that they're working with them, as a sign that they trust them, as a sign that they're going to promote them. At the same time, they're negotiating their contract. It's almost like, see, we really care for you. We're giving you the Intercontinental Championship and we're really going to push you. And as soon as they sign the contract, they lose the belt. So what do you think of that bartering tactic? Go ahead and leave your comments below. I'd be curious to hear from you. Is it shady? Is the WWE just doing this to trick their wrestlers? And does it tarnish the worth of the Intercontinental Championship? Comment below.